We're thinking today about drainage basins and the factors which affect drainage basins and you'll know that one of the most important factors is the geology of the drainage basin. We're here in South East Cambridgeshire in a chalk pit. I'm going to think a little bit about how chalk might affect the hydrograph. So let's first of all think about the hydrological pathways which water will follow when it uh, falls onto land like this. If we look at the top here of the rock face you can see vegetation. So first of all incoming precipitation will fall onto that vegetation and it's got then a choice of pathways. It can either land on the vegetation, it's intercepted and then it's lost back into the atmosphere as interception loss or it might land on the soil. You can see a very thin layer of soil at the top of the cliff. On the soil, it then can move into that soil layer through the process of infiltration. And once it's infiltrated, it then reaches the weathered bedrock and then the bedrock proper, which you can see exposed because we're standing here at the bottom of the quarry. So water will then move into the rock pores. And you may already know that chalk is highly porous. It's got many, many rock, uh, like small voids, small gaps within the rock. And so water can move into those uh, and it can move down uh, through the rock layers progressively. And it moves um, a couple of different ways. First of all, it moves from pore to pore, from space to space. But also, if you look on the rock face, we've got clear joints, vertical cracks in uh, the rocks. And therefore, the water can also move quite fast through those vertical joints. Uh, that's called primary permeability through the little pores and secondary permeability where it moves through the joints. This is very, very important for the hydrograph. So in this drainage basin, the chalk is permeable, water can move into it. So that means that when it rains, I'm going to simulate here a rainstorm, uh, that water can move straight into uh, the rock. It moves in via the pores, the small gaps between the individual skeletons which this rock is made up of. It's made up of um, plankton skeletons which have been compressed very, very slowly under the seabed over millions of years. Um, and this means that it acts as a very substantial aquifer here in South Cambridgeshire. So the geology of the drainage basin catchment is really important for the hydrograph. So remember there are broadly speaking two kinds of hydrograph on the y-axis you've got discharge and on the x-axis you've got time and in some catchments you get a very very steep rise in the discharge of the river and then a steep fall and that's flashy. That flashy type of hydrograph is terrible for flooding and the risk of flooding is very high in those catchments but here on the chalk in South Cambridgeshire the hydrograph looks more like this. It's very low and attenuated and that's because water moves through those slow flow processes. It first of all infiltrates, then it percolates and it moves very, very slowly, millimetres uh, per hour. And those uh, very slow flow processes mean that um, the water uh, has um, uh, only reaches the river uh, slowly and often only after several days. So the second major thing about catchments which are situated on permeable rocks like this one, uh, this is the catchment here of the, the River Cam and the Great Ooze, um, the, this permeable rock has a very, very valuable function. It stores water and that water can be used uh, for, for people in their homes and also for industry. And um, seasonally, so between winter and summer, there's variation in how much water is stored. Uh, in, in South Cambridgeshire, here Cambridge Water are monitoring how much water there is and how much water there is stored in this rock. And they monitor it by digging boreholes. There are six major boreholes which are found here on the chalk aquifer. And what they can see is that the upper level of saturation in the rock moves. So winter, that level, the water table will rise. Whereas in summer, when there's less precipitation and when the jet stream is usually moving far to the north of us, we have less rainfall and so the water table will fall. And you can see that on the graph showing the water level in the boreholes in South Cambridgeshire. It also is incredibly valuable for a catchment like this one because it means that if there's an increased demand for water, Cambridge Water can pump uh, water from the aquifer out of the rocks and um, treat it and then into people's homes for domestic use. Um, and that process is called abstraction. 
they just have to be careful that they don't over abstract the water which is found here in the aquifer um, and that they use it as a renewable resource so that the water table isn't falling year on year which would be an unsustainable use.